makes an act of indictment and if you look into the map you find that Pernambuco is a state in Brazil. Brazil is in South America. So the state of Pernambuco and from a place called Pocao, which is a mountainous region, from there the river runs through the length and breadth of the Pernambuco state and finally at Recife it discharges the water into the Atlantic River. River is the source of life for the citizens of Pernambuco. River sustains human life everywhere but however pollution has become a great threat to life. The threat is caused to the environment by human intervention. Looking at the word origin, Capybariabe, this word is actually derived from the Tupi tribe. The Tupi were people who were one of the most numerous people indig indigenous to Brazil before colonization. So they had two names like Capyar, Capyar Bay or Capybaria Bay, meaning Capybaria River. So we will pronounce this as Capybaria Bay. The Capybaria Bay River cuts across the town Recife and discharges into the Atlantic River. The central image of the river and the lives of the people on the two banks of the river are presented without any sentimentality. The poem unmistakably presents a landscape and waterscape that are scarred by waste caused by human beings, poverty and environmental degradation. Cabral undertakes an act of indictment. He builds up the poem by the technique of cataloging and presents a series of analogies cataloging like the river of the water of the silt and compares it with analogies like a dog without feathers or like a rose colored fountain like a mucous membrane etc. Cabral says that rivers are represented in maps as blue in color but nowadays they offer a sharp contrast to the actual color of the river. In the past, the rivers must have been pure and blue in color. Hence, they are colored blue on the maps. But now, Cabral says that the, the rivers do not have blue covers at all because they are polluted and brown in color. Cabral suggests that the rivers may have lost their beauty and purity and Cabral ignores the environmental pollution that has destroyed them. When the maps were drawn, the rivers must have been blue. But presently, the rivers are no longer blue and these maps need to be recolored, according to the poet. Cabral's central image for the river is a dog. The analogy is central to the meaning of the poem. The attempts to define the river continue till the end of the poem. Rivers are a source of life and the cradles of civilization. Rivers sustain human life everywhere. But the pollution of the rivers is a threat to life. Cabral uses the images of crossing the river and the dog crossing the road, which suggest acts of inconsequence. The central image is of a river and the lives of the people on the banks of the river are presented without any sentimentality. Cabral also in the first two stanzas talks about a dog. This dog is also associated with the river. The images of crossing the river, the dog crossing the road suggests acts of inconsequence. So there is a 
absence of seriousness to the river. So throughout the poem, Cabral conveys that man is not very serious to the river. There is always a lack of seriousness. Yao Cabral de Melo Neto is one of the most distinguished Brazilian poets. He came from the Pernambuco district. He worked in the sugar plantations during his early ages and later moved on to Rio de Janeiro. He is a master of evocative poetry. In evocative poetry, talks about the end of life, leading us to the question, what next? It brings strong images, memories, or feelings to mind. Cabral entered the literary scene in his 20s with Stone of Slumber. And this particular book, he printed at his own expense. Later on, he came to be identif identified with the generation of 45 poets. Now, these poets provided a new direction, drawing upon symbolism, surrealism, and hermeticism, which means the pursuit of empirical knowledge pertaining to spiritual mysteries. Cabral's most famous work, Morte Evida Severina, was translated by Elizabeth Bishop and people mention, critics mention Cabral as a person belonging to the concrete poetry movement. Concrete poetry is a type of poetry or language based art in which the way words and letters are visually presented and this is very important, how words and letters are visually presented. The poem talks about the Capiparia Bay River and how it flows through the Pernambuco state in Brazil and finally discharges its water at, into the Atlantic Ocean. And there a town is built. The town is called Recife. As the Capi Paribé River reaches the Atlantic Ocean, it cuts across Recife, or rather it divides the city into two. There are many bridges that uh, link both parts of Recife. On to the poem. The city is crossed by the river as a street is crossed by a dog, a piece of fruit by a sword. The river is called to mind a dog's docile tongue or a dog's sad belly or that other river which is the dirty wet cloth of a dog's two eyes. So basically you find that the river crosses cuts across Recife and it's, uh, people are very just casual about it. Um, just like road across not many people care for it. Just a, a casual thing. So people also can, uh, see the river as a casual thing. Um, you, it may be like the dog's docile tongue. The dog is a symbol of um, an animal which um, which listens or which obeys the master. So it's basically the river sort of obeys the uh, it obeys whatever the human being does. The way to doing it, as I learned a lot. For the dog's sad belly or that other river which is a dirty wet cloth of a dog's two eyes. So you can see the pictures wherein the waste is put and uh, the river 
keeps cash flow flowing. At the same time, if uh, the river is almost covered with algae and it's like, so uh, Cabral compares it to the dog which is crossing that, which is maybe um, not really good or the uh, dog may not really be able to uh, swim across as comfortably as maybe in a, a river which is crystal clear. The river was like a dog without feathers. So it's the, the river seems to be just flowing on. It knew rose, nothing of the blue rain, of the rose colored fountain. So it, it hasn't maybe even heard of what you call the blue rain. So blue rain is supposed to be uh, the, the, the pure water coming down. Rather, it has only heard of what you call the acid rain. And it has never seen uh, a, a real pure white or blue fountain. Rather, the fountains that flow or the, the waterfalls that rush by are all slime and mud and dirt covered. So the color of the water flowing down through the Pernambuco state and reaching Recife, the color of the Capi Paribé River is not really blue. It is rather muddy or grimy or uh, it's got that sort of algae type of color. The river was like a dog without fe feathers. It knew rose, nothing of the blue rain of the rose colored fountain of the water in a water glass of the water in pictures of the fish in the water of the breeze on the water so the river knew nothing of these things nothing of the water in a water glass of or of the water in pictures so the uh, the uh, Cabral states that the water is not portable. This is a picture. So the waters of Capipari Bay River cannot be drunk straight away, right from the river. Or rather, he has never seen much fish in the water. And for that matter, even breeze on the water. So the water flows, water is sort of stale and stagnant. It flows, but at the same time, there is. I have not seen much of fish in the water, or of the, of or is there any breeze? Rather, it knew the crabs of mud and rust. It knew silt like a mucous membrane. So rather than seeing these fresh things, the river has seen more of crabs, crabs that live among the mud and the rust, the industrial waste. And uh, it knows more of silt, the sense that the, when the waters recede and the dirt and grime accumulate, like the dirt and grime accumulating, and you'll, you have animals, uh, small, small crustaceans living in this. So it knows of these things. It knew, it knew the crabs of mud and rust. It must have known the octopus and surely knew the feverish women living in oysters. It must have um, seen oysters maybe and the octopus, these tentacled eight-legged um, creatures. It must have seen all these things and also it must have and surely knew the feverish women living in oysters. So, oysters you get pearls so uh, people might be f going down and uh, searching for oysters and bringing it out breaking it open and taking out the pearl so it must have known the octopus and surely knew the feverish women living in oysters so uh, people m might be using the capybara river to fish for oysters to or to hunt for oysters open the shell and uh, then thereafter take the oysters which will adorn the neck of beauty of ladies
the river never opens up to fish, to the shimmer, to the naively unrest existing in fish. It never opens up in fish. So the uh, poet is very sad. The river never opens up to fish, to the shimmer, to the naively unrest existing in fish. So the fish, according to Cabral, says that it has what you call a naively unrest. It is always, you know, waiting for, or uh, there is an unrest always in the fish because one day it will ultimately end on the table of a person. So, but this river never, we never have seen any of these things. The, never, the river never opens up to fish, to the shimmer, to the, so there is no glistening. There is that, uh, the, the um, sh uh, fish doesn't have that sort of shimmer, which is usually there. To the naively unrest existing in fish, it never opens up in fish. So there is uh, absolutely no fish at all in the, in the rivers of the Capybari Bay. It opens up in flowers. Of course, there are flowers there. You know, in, in the previous stanza, they talked about the rose. It opens up in flowers, poor and black, like black men and women. It opens up into a flora as squalid and beggarly. There are flowers, there are rare flowers as the Capybari Bay River flows poor and black, like black men and women, it opens up into a flora as squalid and beggarly. So the flowers are not, they are more uh, flowers that are dried up and, you know, they look withered and uh, they're not uh, like the impoverished men and women who live on the sides of the Capipari Bay River. It, as the black who must beg, it opens up in hard-leafed mangroves kinky as a black man's hair. So uh, the the river flows, you don't find much of flowers, and just like uh, poor people who beg, who are on the street, on the sides, you can see uh, small children sitting on the sides of the river, possibly fishing or possibly looking for, uh, for trash. And from the trash, they might be picking up certain things which might fetch them a little bit of money and the the river is also compared to the black man's hair which is uh, like like the you can see the comparison the the mangrove forest as compared to the hair of a black man smooth like the belly of a pregnant dog the river swells without ever bursting the river's childbirth is like a dog's fluid and invertebrate. So the the Cabral says that the belly of a pregnant dog is very smooth. The same way the river flows very smoothly without ever bursting. So even if in heavy monsoon season during the heavy rains, you can see that the river is uh, maybe overflowing its banks. You can see that that certain places it is overflowing, but then it never bursts. Like like the rivers burst, most of the rivers bursted in, uh, burst its, its banks in Kerala. They just keep flowing on Atlantic Ocean alone. They just flow towards the Atlantic Ocean. During heavy rains, it might be swelling. Well, down and down, it just keeps flowing. I have never heard of the Capi Pari Bay River or I have never seen the Capi Pari Bay River bursting its banks. So it's like the, the river's childbirth is like a dog's fluid and invertebrate, just like how dogs give birth to pups, the same way the birth or the origin of the river and the flow of the river and the discharge of the river in, into the Atlantic is very smooth and an invert bit. It's, uh, it's like it's happening magically. And I never saw it seed as bread when rising seeds. In silence, the river bears its bloating poverty, pregnant with black earth. So I've never seen, if you look into the bread, if you baked bread, you know that when it is rising, amao bondumo, chalapo, they have containers for it, metallic containers, by which the bread 
rises in what you call a controlled atmosphere. That is a container in the proportion of the container. If we use baking, we use bread in the shape of the shape I regular so I have never seen the river capybara river uh, rising and you know overflowing its banks and going here and there or scattered I have my out pay the the rivers must have broken its back its banks Paksha and the island I've never seen it seed as bread when rising seeds in silence the river bears its bloating poverty. When, the, uh, when there is a heavy rain, uh, the, uh, the river overflows its banks. Here you can see the overflowing a little bit more. You can see that and you can see the mud on it. So I have seen this maybe, but I have never seen it you know, go abnormally. The river has never flowed abnormally. And uh, the river bears its bloating poverty, pregnant with black earth. But all that I've seen is after that, uh, the aftermath is that you find the river is not really blue, it is black in color. So it's, it brings down the mud and all from the high, uh, from the high plateaus, from the high mountains. Out the Oregi Verenadam, the floods might cause the uh, waste of the cities to flow into the river. Chirki Paranal, Nila Kalra on the river finally sort of becomes black in color. It yields in silence, in black earthen caves, in black earthen boots or gloves for the foot or hands. Silent night in the chair and corpula. So you can just imagine. You can see this picture and you, you can see him, uh, see the person um, going into the river and the his legs become slimy or black. So the river doesn't say anything. It yields in silence, in black earthen caves, in black earthen boots or gloves for the foot or hands. So the river is very... And docile, it doesn't do anything, just like a dog, as sometimes happens with dogs. The river seems to stagnate, its waters would turn thicker and warmer, flowing with the thick, warm waves of a snake. So, just like dogs are very docile, the, uh, the river is also very docile, but the sometimes it might burst its banks. And uh, when there are heavy rains, it might flow like the warm waves of a snake. So the river is compared to a snake. The snaky and winding pattern of the river is, can be seen in the picture. It had something of a crazy man's stagnation. So the um, man's quest for destruction or man's quest to go forward uh, leaves a trail of waste behind him and this is exactly what happens here the rivers are polluted because man is more greedy to attain more and more <clears throat> something of the stagnation of hospitals prisons asylums of the dirty and smothered life dirty smothering laundry it trudged through so there is in the uh, districts as it flows from the mountains it might be pure the water might be crystal clear but then as it reaches the cities you find stagnation you find dirt you find that the uh, waters stop at certain places and then you also find the dirty discharge from different uh, companies from hospitals from other uh, uh, industrial effluents being directly thrown into the river from mental houses from mental hospitals from prisons and even in that you find people washing their clothes so it silently goes through it flows through the parna the